So children, do you guys remember what we spoke about last week? It's hard to sometimes remember what was last week. It's a long time ago. What did we talk about? Is this a hint? Yeah? About praying. And what were some of the things we talked about with praying? We talked about the way we pray, right? What are some of the things we, we did when we say we prayed? The motions of how you pray, right? So we fold our hands and we bow our heads and we often kneel. And we talked about how those things are like symbols of our humility and about how we only can turn to the Lord. And we actually, in some ways, we didn't talk about why we fold our hands very much. But in some ways, it's thinking, I'm tying my own hands so that the Lord can use them. So that's one way to think about it. And then we talked about how sometimes it's really hard to hear the Lord and all of the stuff that's going in on our, in our lives and in our minds where we might be thinking about our toys or that person who made me angry. And we think about those things, and sometimes it drowns out the Lord. Do you guys remember what we did? We had everybody talking and seeing if you guys could try to pray. And we asked to try each day to find a really quiet space that you can pray in so that you can talk to the Lord and actually hear him. We're going to talk about a similar thing today, very much similar, and it's taken from a story about a prophet named Elijah. Now, in this story, Elijah had just made a really amazing miracle happen. Him, he was a prophet of the Lord, and then you had this other guy whose name was Ahab and his wife Jezebel, and they were king of Israel, but they were really nasty people. And they followed a person or a god called Baal. And in this story, Elijah had them all make this huge altar, and they filled it up with like fire, and they put a bull on top, and they were supposed to make their god call down fire upon the altar and, whoo, and burn up the sacrifice. And so the prophets of Baal, and they danced around, and they did all kind of crazy things, and they never got the thing to start on fire. And then Elijah did the same thing, but he even added water around. How are you supposed to, can you start fire in water? They had him put tons of water all over the place, and in just a word, fire came down from heaven and, whoo, and consumed both the sacrifice and all of the prophets of Baal. Yeah, do you have a question? Yeah. Yeah, well, they, they didn't even do that. Elijah actually asked the Lord for fire to come down from heaven, and it was a miracle. But then they were all angry at Elijah because he worshiped the Lord. And so he ran away up into the mountains, and he was hiding in a cave, and he was all upset. And he was really, really sad and almost kind of mad with the Lord. And the Lord came, and this is where our story begins. This is chapter 19 of 1 Kings, beginning at verse 9. So there he went into a cave, and he spent the night in that place. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him and said, What are you doing here, Elijah? So he said, I have been zealous for the Lord God of hosts, for the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant. They've torn down your altars, and they've killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they seek to take my life. And he said, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great strong wind tore into the mountains, and they broke the rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, there was an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, there was a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still, small voice. So it was when Elijah heard it that he wrapped his face in his mantle and he went out and stood in the entrance of the cave. And suddenly a voice came to him and said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? 
Think about this. Oh, I don't have my big rock back here. Where did it go? We'll use a small one. How strong would a wind have to be to break rocks? Yeah? Yeah? Very strong. It's strong muscles. It's got strong muscles. That's true. It would have to be so strong to just break it apart, right? Thank you, Shiloh. <laughs> yeah, you have a thought? Yeah, so it would have to be like a number three hurricane, possibly like tornadoes. Yeah, it'd have to be really strong, yeah? Mm -hmm. You are very, very astute. That's a pretty big word. It means that you're keen, you know what you're talking about. The wind itself came and broke the rocks. It's amazing. It's so powerful. But it says that the Lord wasn't in the wind. The Lord wasn't in the earthquake that came afterwards. It said the Lord wasn't even in the fire. So you remember last week we were talking about all those crazy things in our heads that keep us from hearing the Lord? This is the same thing. That wind is all of the changes that happen in our life all of the time. All the constant changing. And we get worried. Why does it have to change? We like to stay the same. And then the earthquake is all of the shattering things that happen in our lives. Maybe somebody that we love passed away. And that's very sad. And it can be very breaking for us. Like an earthquake shatters our lives. And then the fire is actually talking about all of the evil things that we hold in our hearts all the false ideas that we have in our minds. And it's saying the Lord isn't in any of those things. The Lord doesn't cause any of those things. In fact, the Lord is always there to help us up. And we have to quiet our minds, just like we said, to hear that still, small voice. Because the Lord is to say a still, small voice. And you want, I want you guys to think about something real quick. And we'll get your hand in a little bit, Shiloh, okay? I want you guys to think about somebody else in your life. Maybe it's somebody in this room. Because we can do something for the Lord in this exact same way. We can be a still, small voice. Maybe you see somebody who is hurting, who is sad, and you can think about what's one really good thing about them that I can tell them. And you can go up and say, you know, I really love how kind you are. And say it in a still, small voice, with sincerity. You can go to somebody and say, I know you're going through a really hard time right now, but I'm here for you. I love you. Those are things that actually the Lord is saying through us. When we care for other people, it's like being that still, small voice of the Lord coming through all of the chaos that was going on in the cave and on that mountain. So this week, I'm really hoping that you guys can find one person at least that you can think about them and go, I love this in them, and go tell them. Go tell them, because it's actually a way that the Lord tells us through other people how much he loves us. Okay? So can you guys do that? Try to think of one person that you can really think, what's a good thing in them, and how can I tell it to them? Okay? All right.